Hey everyone, it's Blair here at Time Trades. Thanks for joining me this weekend. This is your weekly video for Sunday, June 18th. I am going to be just focusing on the NQ or stocks as well as uh, Bitcoin in today's video. Um, because I'm going to be going a little bit deeper into some of the geometry that I see on uh, on tech stocks, which is, uh, I think it's really interesting. So I wanted to spend a little bit more time on that. The last few weeks, I have not been on top of this big push up. So I'm giving myself uh, an F for the basically the last month of, of forecasts that I've made. Um, absolutely did not uh, forecast this move up. In hindsight, um, it was the answer was right on my charts. So um, if we go and take a look at some of those GAN fans that I've been showing based on the Mars cycle, um, it the pump really got going. Whoops, the pump really got going. Um, shortly after these GAN fans crossed here on uh, May 16th, May 17th. So um, I had the GAN fan cross right here on my chart from these GAN, uh, GAN fans anchored to important Mars cycles. Um, we got the cross we, and that re really was the trigger to the move up. And then the move up just crawled up the side of this, this big green circle that I tweeted out earlier this week. So I want to do a drill down on this green circle today because I think that's a key to understanding the market's geometry at the moment. So let me just hide the GAN fans and I'll walk you through what I'm seeing. So let's go down here and we can hide that. All right, so I'm still focused on this target box down here. We're gonna update that in today's video, but let's start with this uh, green beach ball. Um, this is anchored, the center point is up here and centered above the October low, okay? Um, and I've drawn it so that the edge kind of captures as many of these touch points as possible. Um, now, what I find super interesting is the left edge of this circle intersects within a day of, okay, not the all-time high, but pretty darn close. Um, we've got the right edge of the circle over here, uh, July 31st, okay? So um, two very interesting dates that we need to keep in mind. All right, so uh, here's, our, here's our circle. Now, I wanted to kind of drill down a little bit on this. So let me walk you through um, what I did. And um, we go up here to the bullish ball group, okay? Um, I, I started by... Um, drawing, da, 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 da. I wanted to get a 30 degree angle on this because just sort of, you know, visually I thought that things were lining up kind of interesting with a 30 de degree angle. So I drew a couple of 30 degree angles anch anchored to the middle, all right? Um, and then I drew a couple of rays um, emanating uh, from the center of the circle at 30 degrees, and we get um, a very close to a touch point over here. I'm going to zoom in. So this is Wednesday, the 2nd of February, 2022. And over here, that 30 degree angle um, intersects the, the Friday, uh, the, the Friday's price action here. So we can zoom in and see that. You can see there's a little bit of a wick and then it got pushed down. Okay, so that's interesting. Now, um, the next angles I wanted to draw is I wanted to get this, this high over here on, on March. So uh, we added, um, that angle actually happened to be a, uh, so I drew the ray first and then the angle. So this angle here is actually a 37 degree angle, which um, in itself is kind of an interesting number because uh, 137 is the fine structure con constant if you're into physics at all. So we've got this, um, so this is 30 degrees, this is 37 degrees. So let's 
um, reflect that on the right side of the chart, we draw the same thing here and we get um, this uh, pump on May 26 and uh, a slowdown and then a retest over there. So this line seems to have some importance as well, okay? Um, now, we can we can see some interesting price action if we kind of fold things back a little bit. If, you know, mentally in your head, you can fold things back over the, um, uh, over the middle of the circle. Um, and, and that creates some uh, price ranges here between these two points. We can, we can see how uh, this price here, 12,929, and, and at the bottom of this range over here, um, were um, the, this was the bottom before a push up to test the perimeter of the circle here. Um, and this was the bottom here before the big push up into the August high. So it looks like we've got the equivalent. There's a lot of interesting sym symmetry here. We've, it looks like we've got the equivalent of that August high over here at uh, Friday or uh, this, th this past week's price action. Um, so a, uh, if, if, if things are going to play out as kind of a fold back, of last um, uh, of of the March move, then we would be looking at a drop down into what I think is this range here. This would be a valid target range for a drop. So uh, this kind of correction, um, uh, I'm going to update to capture this correction. I'm going to update the target box here. I'm going to increase the price range a little bit because I think the top of this. Um, uh, of this uh, price level here, that would capture kind of the, the 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 minimum correction we're looking at, and the bottom down here that would be the maximum. I don't think there's going to be a massive crash. I think there's going to be a, a a significant correction that's going to inject a bit of fear into the market. Um, but I think at this stage, after what we've seen in terms of the extreme greed greed levels that, that we've seen and the um, huge increase in call buying. Uh, I think it's time for the pendulum to swing the other way. And we've got this very interesting geometry here um, around this the perimeter of the circle. Um, and I think this will set us up for a push up into um, the edge of the circle over here at the end of July to complete the cycle. So you can see here how the cycle started over here near the all time high. Um, and uh, then I think uh, a drop down to set up the push up is the next uh, key part of the forecast. So, um, so I've updated this um, forecast box down here to capture that correction. And then I think there's gonna be a, uh, another forecast move up here um, that, reflects this price over here, right? So uh, this is what I'm, I'm looking at in terms of a potential target um, right at or close to all time highs by the time this, uh, this circle completes, this geometry completes here. So let's go and take a look at how this lines up with the time trades forecast um, because this is just geometry let's take a look at how that meshes up with the machine learning that we've got. So we're over here, we're gonna take a look at uh, timetrades.com. This is the website I built that uses machine learning um, and GAN techniques to create some probabilities of where pivots may happen and where big moves may happen. Okay, so right now we're looking at a uh, non-directional forecast. What that means is that we've got two swim lanes on the chart. We, the purple uh, values are probabilities of a five-day move greater than one and a half standard deviations, and brown is probability of a pivot. Um, and um, we can see here on the NDX that we've got um, increasing probabilities of a one and a half standard deviation move into the end of June. Um, and then we've got a pivot here. And then we've got um, uh, another pivot forecast late J July, early August, 
corresponding with a big move. So um, even though these are non-directional, there's no sort of implied up or down move in these probabilities, based on the geometry work that we just did, we're, um, we're going to uh, interpret this pivot here as a pivot low, as that correction. And then this pivot over here, we're going to interpret as, as a pivot high. Okay, so that's NDX. Let's see if that aligns with some of the other major indexes we track. So we've got QQQ here. We've got a pivot low July 7th. So that is uh, right in this, uh, this uh, lower target box here, July 6th. That's about roughly the range, okay? Um, and then we've got a big move up. This one happens a little bit later. This happens to extend into mid-August, okay? So again, I'm assuming, even though there's no implied direction here, I'm assuming that this move here is up and we've got a big pivot mid-August. Mid so um, I wouldn't discount the possibility that whatever move we get after this anticipated correction extends beyond late July, another couple of weeks into mid-August. Okay, so that's the cues. Maybe look at SPX as well to see if there's alignment here. Let me just uh, turn off GAN waves. Uh, so SPX has a pivot uh, July 3rd, and then we get a, uh, a big move mid-July. Mid uh, and then we get another pivot on August 2nd. So uh, again, there's alignment with between the machine learning probabilities and the geometry-based forecast that we just did. Okay, so uh, I think that's a good update there. So um, in short, what we're looking for is some sort of correction here. It could be um, down into this target box. Um, it's not going to be a crash. We're not going to test all time lows, but we are going to um, balance out the geometry here and achieve a, a night net because the symmetry is quite strong. I expect that symmetry to continue and uh, I expect it to continue up into late July when this uh, green beach ball uh, terminates. So that's really the, the whole background for the forecast here. Um, and let's take a look at Bitcoin before we close the call. Um, we're gonna bring up uh, BTC USD. Um, and we've got as well an, another pivot um, in late June, uh, early July timeframe. So uh, that roughly aligns with the um, uh, stock forecast. But what I think is super interesting over here is um, an, another thing I've been tweeting about on my feed is some of the work of Tristan. And he open sourced uh, a, basically a new set of time and price ratios, which are yeah, very, very impressive in terms of what these ratios um, are doing when you map it to uh, a price swing. So um, this chart here is showing these new ratios that are based on Feigenbaum constants, uh, as well as Malthusian, Malthusian constants. Um, so these are interesting mathematical constants. I'll drop some links in the, in the comments below so you can research some more if you're interested. Let me just double click on these so you can see these. Now these are 100% open sourced by, by Tristan. So uh, credit to him and his work for not only just researching all this and having the intelligence to come up with these values, but also to give it away to the community. So um, thanks very much for, for this impressive contribution. So these are the time zone constants. Both the time and price constants are the same, and you can use these just as you would use uh, FIBs, FIB ratios in TradingView. So uh, that's the time. Let's take a look at the, the price values. So if I double click on that, you can see these here. So um, these are all documented in the paper that he published. 
Uh, so, so I'll drop a link to that. You can look that up if you want to refer to this. I just wanted to share the settings here. But um, one of the things uh, I found is um, when uh, what seems to work well, at least for me, and I think there's many, many different ways to use these things, and I'm really just scratching the surface here. So keep that in mind. I am by no means an expert in using these new ratios. Um, however, uh, using the last move, the last swing in a move or the first swing in a move um, makes for some very nice projections. Now, one of the things that you'll notice about these numbers is they do get big, okay? So um, these, are, these are not ways to subdivide a, a move. These are ways to um, extend a move. So you wanna take a fairly short yet important move and use these values to project into the future, okay? Um, uh, so we've got this last move here in Bitcoin's move down into uh, late November, and then the you can see how the price levels here, the 2.5, the 1.67, have been very important and re generally respected very well. There was a little deviation up above here, but after that, it turned into a significant resistance level. Um, the time um, values are also interesting as well. So um, you can see how the uh, uh, time um, uh, ratios have kind of aligned with inflection points in the MACD. I've got the MACD down here. This is a simple 22, um, uh, 2110 MACD, so the fast... Um, moving average is 20 periods, the slow is 110. Uh, the actual MACD line is blue, the signal line is orange. And you can see how um, inflection points in price and the MACD appear um, around these uh, around these time ratios as well. So um, what I notice has happened recently is, the, the time ratios have preceded big moves. So here's the 4.6692 precedes a big move. Here's the 7.1398 precedes a big move. Here's the 9.33 precedes a big move. We've got another time ratio coming up here on Bitcoin um, on uh June 21st, okay? So um, I'm willing to bet this is going to precede a big move. Um, the, I think that the question is gonna be direction. The safe way to play this would be just to trade the move that happens on June 21st uh, and let the market elect the direction it wants to go. Okay, so that's really all I wanted to cover here is a um, little bit of uh, analysis work using geometry. And I really wanted to amplify the great work that uh, Tristan has done and contributed to the community. So, so thanks for that. I want to wish everyone luck uh, in this coming week trading. And we will talk to you again next week. Thank you. Bye now.